Hi everyone, this is Emily Bowen Moore. This is Journalism 273 in the Neek School of Journalism and New Media. This video is um, uh, relating to Photoshop and this you know, assignment and practice is geared towards editing a photo, um, just a basic edit um, and to resize the photo and adjust the resolution of the photo. So this will be helpful in your assignments, but any application or photo editing you do, you would do in Photoshop, which is technically a raster-based program. Um, and raster meaning it is for images that are created with pixels. And in a different video, you'll understand the difference between raster and vector, but for this purpose, we are just going to concern ourselves with the actual act of editing this photo in a basic way. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do, you can use a, your own photo for this, or if you're grabbing a photo from the internet, we want to make sure that that photo is royalty free and that we are not impeding on any trademark um, or copyright laws. So I'm going to do sustainable hands here because I want to do an image that relates to sustainability. And if we click on images, normally we would have a database of images here. They're going to be from Shutterstock and other places. Um, but these are not all, we don't know if these are royalty free. We don't know if these are able to be used without a license in any way. Um, so one of the things that you can do is go to Tools in Google, and under Usage Rights, you can select to see just images that are uh, specifically labeled for reuse. And here we want to have a label for reuse with modification. We don't want to use the exact image, um, especially for some of our assignments, you will be required to adjust the image and modify it create and transform it into a new concept. So click on labeled for reuse with modification and it will filter those photographs and give you a database of photographs that you can use and modify for your particular application. Now here I like this graphic here um, with the hands and so I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to view the image and you can see that they offer a free download of this at no cost or contract. So I'm going to download this. And I'm just going to click it and drag it to my desktop for now. Now it's a PNG. And that extension is it's a low res image file. Uh, JPEGs are also used as low res image files because they are for web use, which is very appropriate for web use. However, we're going to have to convert this to a different extension for print. So there's two ways you can pull this up in Photoshop. Um, you can either drag the image itself into Photoshop and into the icon and it will open that image. Or you can go to File Open and open the image from your desktop there. So here's the image again, and it will open it up in another tab at the top here. So you can do it either way. Um, we don't want to create a new document and place it, because in that case, what it's going to do, it's going to pick up all the extra area around that object or photo and add it to uh, the size in relation to size and, and resolution. We just want the image itself. Um, and we're going to look at this image and see what's going on. Most of the, the settings that you have are going to be under image at the top menu. And if you click on that, you can see your options here. Um, now, if we go to mode, which we want to do, we want to look at the mode here. And RGB color is what it's set at now, which is, again, very appropriate for web use. Um, but for print, we've got to change the color mode to CMYK. Um, and it will give you uh, a warning saying it's going to convert the profile. And that's OK. You're going to see the color slightly change in that different color mode, because the color 
printing is going to be a little different in terms of the options and what we would see in the gamete system. You can see the colors got a little more dull. We can go back and adjust this. So if we go to adjustments now under image, we can adjust all the, the photographic um, levels and the brightness and contrast, just like anything dealing with photo editing. And if you are a photographer or you have taken photography, then you know about these settings. So I'm just gonna create some more contrast here and lighten it up a little bit. So now this is, has a little more contrast between the green and the blue here. And I would like to take out this white background. I just really want the globe and the hands mostly. Um, so I'm going to take out this background. Now sometimes you can get an image and it will not let you uh, edit anything in the image in terms of its pixels. Um, so we have to do a couple of things to make it editable. Um, and one of those things is we have to convert it to a smart object. So if we go to layer and we go to smart object, convert to smart object, what that does is it allows everything that's incorporated into this image file, it makes it available. So now we've created a smart object. So now all the information that's in that file is available. And we want to also rasterize this image. We want to make sure that the pixels are editable. So when you rasterize the smart object, you will make all the pixels editable uh, that are available. So now we can edit this, no problem. So the first thing I'm gonna do over here, in your toolbox, you have several selection tools here. You have a marquee tool, which allows you to you know, select particular geometric shapes. Um, you have the lasso tool, which allows you to kind of draw around an object or lasso the selected area. Um, the magnetic lasso is really nice to use because it clings like a magnet to the edge of the part of the image you're, you're trying to capture or select. And the magic wand tool allows you to uh, just click on a selected area and select it. Um, so in this case, we want to take this out. And I think the, the best way is to use, or the easiest way is to use a magic wand tool. Now this particular image has a very crisp edge to it, which makes it extremely easy. Sometimes you have images that have textured backgrounds or a lot of complexity to the image. So in that case, it might be better to use the lasso tool or one of the other selection tools available. Um, so I'm going to click on this. You'll see a little moving line go around everything. And because the hands reach the edge and separate those areas, it didn't pick up the bottom down here. So I can pick those, I can add those to my selection just by holding the shift key and clicking on those areas as well. So now we see a moving a line around everything. Now this is the selected background. And anytime you're using the magic wand tool, um, if you look in your panel up here, you can see the tolerance here. What that means is that is the amount of pixels um, that it is trying to pick up. And in this case, 60 works really well because you can see the moving line is hugging the image very nicely. Um, we don't have any, we have a nice silhouette. It's, it's um, very crisp, which like I said, if you have a crisp edge around some of these images, it's a lot easier. Um, but you may have to adjust this tolerance. The higher the tolerance, the more uh, it's gonna pick up in detail. The less the tolerance, the less it's going to pick up in detail. Um, so you may have to adjust that when you're using the selection tool. And the point sample size is, on average, how many pixels um, is picking up in a cluster. So three by three, you can select how this is working. So point sample means it's picking up down to a single pixel, which makes it even more detailed. So I see this, I've got everything selected. I'm just going to click de delete. Do that again. There we go. 
So when I click delete, you'll see the white background disappeared. And you can see that now I have a checkered background. And anytime you see that, that means that it is transparent. And we want to keep that transparency when we save this object or this image. But we want to make sure that our size and resolution is appropriate for our layout. Now I would like to use this in the poster project. And since it's for print and the size is the size of the poster itself is going to be 11 by 17. Um, I need to adjust the size to fit within that space um, appropriately. So anytime you want to look at the size of the image in relation to the resolution, you'll still go back to image and image size. And here, what this means, this means that right now it's 72 PPI or pixels per inch resolution, which again is appropriate for web use. Uh, we want low res, uh, low resolution for web because that keeps people from being able to copy that image very easily or um, stealing it, in other words. Um, but look how big it is. It's 26 by 20 inches. And this little bar keeps everything in proportion. If we unclick this and we were to change the size, you can see that it would skew the image. It's only adapting one side at a time. So you want to make sure you have that link clicked. Um, that way, no matter what we determine one side, the other side automatically adjusts in proportion um, and scale to the other dimensional size. So now we know that we wanted at least 17 inches uh, because that's the size of our poster. That's still bigger than what we will actually use uh, within the poster. But as long as you're going smaller than what the size is, then you can have a crisp image. If you try and go bigger than what it is saying here, then it still may be pixelated, even if we adjust it to the optimum um, resolution, which is 300 pixels per inch. So for high resolution, you want at least 150 to 300 PPI, and that's for print. Um, so we want to adjust that as well. So what this is saying is it's saying even at 300 PPI, this is the maximum size that it can be at this resolution and not be pixelated. Um, so that's what it's telling you when you look at image size here. So we're going to um, preserve those details, so make sure resample is clicked there. And we're going to click OK. And it's going to enlarge and zoom in really far, but that's OK. We're going to, when I zoom back out to the size that we were viewing before, you can see it's still a crisp image and that we are still getting clarity in the image. It's not pixelated, it's not really. Um, you know, causing a distraction here. Um, and you can see, like if we were to enlarge this tremendously, you can see that a pixel-based image, you can see the pixels, okay? So that's what a raster image is all about. It's contained and, and created using pixels here. So when you deal with a raster image, that means that you know, when you scale it, to a certain size, or make any bigger than its original size, then you may have some distortion and lack of clarity there. Now a vector image stays crisp. It's made of paths, not pixels. So it will stay crisp at any size you make it. So we'll look into the difference between raster and vector here in a different video. So we have this. We have it. Um, with a deleted background here. So now we're ready to save this image and use in our layout. So I'm going to go to File and Save As. It was a, a PNG before. Now there's different extensions that you can use for this. Um, if you're wanting a high resolution raster image uh, file, then a TIFF is probably the way to go. Um, you could also save it as a PDF, but a PDF or a JPEG will not preserve your transparent background. It'll turn white again. So that's not what we want. Uh, plus JPEG or PNG, those are going to be um, 
low resolution files, they're not as high quality of an image, an image file. So TIFF is a high quality image file that is a raster image, but it also will preserve your transparency. So we're going to select that. And I'm just going to name this hands to just to give it a different name. And I'm going to put it to my desktop so I can grab it easily. Now when I save, it's going to pull up with this screen for the TIFF option. Now you want to make sure save transparency is clicked here. I'm going to click OK. It'll give you another warning because TIFF files are a little bigger. But that's OK. So now when we look at the desktop, <clears throat> here's our TIFF image. If I were just to open this, um, it's gonna, you're going to see it's kind of a gray background here, but that means it's transparent still. And if I were just to place it um, you know, in InDesign, if I were to open the InDesign and create a frame and place this image in the frame, you can see that our transparent background is there. Let me make this lighter so you can see the hands as well. So now you can see that this image uh, placed OK. We used it at a smaller size than what we actually needed for the dimension of the poster here. Um, so now it works in the layout. We, we had to reduce the size in um, the way we wanted to use it so we, can, uh, we know that it will not pixelate. Um, if we tried to use this at a larger size from what we originally mentioned, if we adapt this way bigger, more than likely, you can see how that's starting to pixelate and the edges are getting a little blurry and that sort of thing because we are trying to enlarge it bigger than its actual size. Um, so as long as you go smaller, you should be good. All right, so that is how we adjust a photo. So we grabbed a photo off the internet. We adjusted the color mode uh, to CMYK for print. Um, we also adjusted the image itself. We adjusted the, um, the brightness and contrast. And we also adjusted the size and resolution 